that you decide. All right, well, uh, we're going to talk about the, the match referee today, Paul Collier, the Welshman who's taking charge. He's the man in the middle for the second time in the Crucible. Last did so, what, 12 years ago, 2004 final, Ronnie against Graham Dodd. But uh, there are many strings to this man's bow because you probably saw him with a little bit of cue surgery on Marco Fu's cue in their semi-final. And he plays a rather large part in the running of the sport behind the scenes as well. This is a very proud day for him. This is the one that you always want to be at. You know, I've been lucky. I've refereed all over the world. You've seen history written in, in that arena. It's just a wonderful place. You know, they call it the theatre of dreams, which is pretty much what it is. It's very special. The youngest man ever to officiate in a world final, Paul Collier. Quiet, please. Frame 26, Graham Dot to break. It's a bit like Stuart Bingham said last year, you know, his name's on the trophy now and nobody can ever take that away. Um, and that was pretty much how I felt. It was a very proud time. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 22, frame on the match. I'm 45 years of age, I've been watching the game over 30 years. And it all started with the Crucible. Almost showtime, ladies and gents. Please welcome your referee, Paul Collier. It's all about concentration. I think if you can concentrate, you, you practice. If, if you can interpret the shots and you can interact with the players, if you can make the players respect you, then it's just so much easier. <laughs> there's some players like to be a little bit involved. They like to have a little laugh. And there's other players who, you know, they won't even look at you. They'd rather not be involved. They get in their zone. And, and you just deal with people different ways. People have said sometimes they watch us at the, the black end of the table because you've got two cameras there, you've got a player there, and you're almost dancing with them. You don't even notice you're doing it, really. You know, you, you're working with the cameramen. You know they want to get the right shots. I don't think I'll ever make Strictly. It's nice, you know, because being a player myself, I do watch the players' techniques and the actions as well. And, you know, you see the way they time the ball for certain shots, and it's, it's all things to help you concentrate. I didn't really set out wanting to be a referee, I wanted to play the game. Hey, we had a great circuit in, in South Wales, you know, you'd travel every weekend, you could go somewhere, you'd be down in uh, Neath, which particularly, uh, I suppose the phrase hotbed is, is the right word down there. I remember doing matches years ago in, in clubs, doing quarterfinals of the Welsh Championship and things like that, where you're in a club where there's maybe 60, 70 people crammed round the table, they're all drinking beer. That, that's when you learn your trade, that's when it's difficult. You know, you're having to tell people to be quiet all the time. You're having to tread over their feet, you know, try not to trip over because they're that close to the table. So you've already gone through all that. So when you get to an arena like the Crucible, really, it's, it should be a lot easier for you then. The first stint of professional refereeing I did was at uh, Norbrecht Castle in Blackpool in 1992, which was the year the game went open and the likes of Mark Williams and Ronnie and John Higgins and all turned pro was also my first season. There's a company called Alston Elliott who still do the TV graphics. They filmed Pop Black Time Frame and that was played in a, in a two day break we had in Blackpool so I stayed up there and just worked with them on that and that led to them offering me a job and I spent nine years with them. I took five years out from the game. I didn't see a way back, to be fair. I did think the game's days were numbered. When Barry got involved, I had a phone call, and he said, well, I got an offer for you. You know, we've got options now in the tournament director side of things, and we think that you'd fit that role. I've learned a lot being a tournament director. There's things that, you know, you don't appreciate as a referee. You just, you turn up at events, and you think they just happen. You've got 11 tables on a truck that tours all around Europe. You know, the, the boys come, they put them in. We rig the scoring kit, we do the administration, and job done and it's quite satisfying. It's a good time to be involved in the game definitely. The assessing of referees I enjoy. It's nice that we can find enough good referees for what we want. 
and tournaments like the Welsh, they're, you know, they're a very good ground in for people, you know, you can bring them in, give them experience with the paying public in big arenas and with all the best players. The concentration is the big thing for them, you suddenly put them out in, in a room where there's ten other tables that they can see every table, they can see all the players, they can see the audience moving around. It's learning to concentrate in that, you know, in that environment. Settle down now, please. I was, I was like 20, 21, 22 when I first started off and I was by far the youngest then. Nobody really came along for years and years after. But there's so many now in, in that age group, you know, with the early 20s. And they're there for the right reasons. And seeing them come through, it, it is great. You know, there's some of them that, the improvement in some of these referees from sort of two, maybe three years ago when they started to the level they're at now is, is brilliant. And if I see, you know, one of those people that, that I've been able to help or, you know, bring along and develop, if, if they did the world final, that, that would be awesome. I'm probably a slightly better referee than I was the last time I did it because I've learnt more as the years have gone by. When I called it a day, I thought I'd probably never work the Crucible again in, in any format. Going up a level now, it's, uh, it's going to be special. And he's doing a fine job, as he always does. He's, he's a terrific person, isn't he? And he's, uh, he's a very, very good referee. Oh, he's top class. He's been around a long time as well, Paul. I've got a lot of time for him. I, I, nearly all the referees who are on there. I mean, I, they're all really good lads and good ladies, obviously. Indeed. Um, yeah, but fantastic. But he's been around a long, long time doing his job. It's, uh, it's encouraging to see. And uh, I was actually asking uh, behind the scenes, there are over 150 referees now on the professional circuit wow that really does show you the growth of the game right around the world doesn't yeah, it yeah and, and like the age of the referee i mean I, I don't i don't understand why why personally why they would want to be a <laughs> snooker ref but it's great i mean it's like the, obviously it's the 150 is incredible huge asset to have the concentration the focus could you do it yeah i could do that i could i, I actually like you know enjoy watching the game and everything i mean i wouldn't referee him obviously i wouldn't fancy picking all the balls out for him <laughs> again but uh, no I, I i could yeah i think so you just but you do have to have a lot of focus a lot of concentration i mean you can occasionally miss things now and again as well but listen it takes a lot of yeah, yeah. imagine being a ref in that frame yesterday oh the long one yes yeah, 76 I mean, minutes yeah yeah, that's where focus and concentration yeah, comes exactly, in. Yeah. And, and good bladder control as well, you well, have to well. say, yeah. Let's <laughs> not go there. He's a, very, he's a very handy man to know as well, as he proved with uh, Marco Fu, actually, because he was the guy that did that surgery on Marco's cue when the tip fell off in the middle of the semi-final. It's a good job he was there as well. Yeah, and, he did, and speaking of good job, that's exactly what he did, because obviously that had to go right back on in virtually the same way it, was, it came off. Difficult with the super glue when you've got a, a tip that's flushed to the cue, and he did a great job with it. Okay, well, uh, well done to Paul, and indeed he's got another, what, day and a half of work here in this final.